I'm, I'm starting to get somewhat suspicious of Google. So I'll give you the exercise that I'm going to do called a deep dive, but I'm doing this exercise where I'm taking all global companies. There's 28 trillion. Uh, it's kind of, I guess I can, I won't show you the data yet, but I'll give you kind of the mock exercise, which is that um, there's 28 trillion US dollars uh, of market cap and the price to sales on that is about 4.4. Uh, so there's about six trillion-ish. Uh, these are all listed American companies. So I have the, the foreign listings too. And then you have to think about private and SMB and stuff like that. But let's just take some of this data and you think that you have roughly, um, so this is the analysis I'm doing for Google. Uh, so market cap, revenue, and then SG&A as a percentage. Is, is roughly 15% from my data across the board. Now, sales and marketing and GNA get split up something like uh, 7% and 7%, but it could be you know 8% and 6% or something like that. So sales and marketing is, is roughly, um, and I think some of you probably know where I'm getting at here, but I think Google's starting to get pretty saturated is, is my point. So you have about $480 billion of sales and marketing expense. And so if you think about um, the revenue of Google, Google's revenue is $100 billion. <laughs> so you're sort of basically, they're at 25% market share, not of like internet advertising or anything like that, but all sales and marketing expense, period. That includes salespeople, marketing people, advertising people, the ads themselves, et cetera, et cetera. And obviously there's more than the 28 trillion in market cap, but that's a lot of, I mean, that's every public company in the United States, uh, including ADRs, um, level one, level two ADRs, not level three ADRs. And so if you add some of the other foreign markets, maybe it's 50 trillion, but I think that um, what I'm saying is that, again, I'll get better numbers, but it's, it's really hard for me, and you'll juxtapose this against Amazon in a second, but it's sort of hard for me to see that the disruption will continue, that the on balance Google is now likely more likely to be the victim of disruption than than where they've been, which is disrupting um, the advertising market. So I'm, I'm somewhat suspicious that Google can grow 20% forever, uh, or at least for many, many years to come. Now the stock isn't exactly pricing that. Um, they don't have to uh, do that for, for much longer, uh, but it does feel like when you start to see things like the recent kerfuffle about some of the advertisements that Google's throwing out there, that maybe they're stretching themselves a little bit to keep that growth up, that maybe their growth will start to come down to the 10, 15% range. Uh, whereas I don't think the same thing's happening with Amazon, which I'll go through in a second, but if you do look up Google, uh, my Google model, um, you'll see that again, thankfully it's not sort of priced for an impossibility. Um, even with uh, the company starting to mature around 2020, and there's sort of a step ladder from the current 20% growth rate down pretty quickly to zero, you still have a stock that, that has a little bit of upside. So, um, you know, keep that in mind. You know, the stock is actually not too expensive, but again, the balance that they could get disrupted makes you wonder about that discount rate. The company's entire business comes from one business line, which could get disintermediated. Again, unlikely to occur too quickly, but not the kind of stock that I love to buy, to be honest. Um, now, if I'm wrong about all of this, then, then maybe growth will continue for uh, at 20% or so. But um, I doubt that other bets in Alphabet will really um, fix the company. Now, they could. Um, their hardware push is somewhat interesting. They talked a lot about that on the call. Um, but I think that the interesting fact is that really they're the ones that are probably going to get disintermediated, that the shoe's now on the other foot, that there's, there's, they have $100 billion in revenue. Uh, 28 trillion on market cap is spending about 480 billion on sales and marketing. Uh, again, maybe maybe uh, two thirds of that is advertising. And again, Google. Again, these numbers should be grossed up a little bit. Maybe that they're they're, they're higher numbers. But regardless, we are looking at serious penetration problem for, for Google. Now, uh, I'll talk about the opposite. I think problem actually with Amazon in a second. Just want to make sure that I've got all this stuff. Oh yeah, Google also entering the cloud. Quite a, quite a bit late here, um, and I'm not exactly sure what, what they're adding to the, the picture here, but they talked about how how, hard, how much they're gonna bet on the cloud, and, and again, I think it's really more, um, you know, they're, they're sort of 
they're number three after Azure, um, it's sort of telling that, or maybe number four after IBM, but it's sort of telling that they're sort of, uh, you know, the, of the tech giants, they're the latest to the cloud. And that, that sort of, uh, I think, maybe speaks to decision-making process here. And again, with respect to advertising, we may be at a top. So of the big tech companies, Google is probably, Google and Apple are ones I don't like. So in any event, uh, Elon Musk is talking about underground roadways uh, with elevators. So I just wanted to point out that he is crazy and that I don't trust him. Uh, I don't think he's the genius everyone thinks he is. Uh, again, I don't hate him. I don't think he's a scam artist or anything, but I, I, I don't get the hype. Kind of, um, I think Tesla is not that impressive of a company. Uh, we'll see what happens to SpaceX. I think of all of this company, SpaceX is probably the most interesting. But uh, even there, I'm not 100% sure what the game plan is. So uh, I'm a little bit, a um, little bit suspicious of Musk. And the guy has an idea every five minutes. The Hyperloop, I think, is a pretty bad idea. I just, you know, he's sort of like a kooky kind of version of Thomas Edison who doesn't actually like get stuff done in my opinion. So anyway, we'll, we'll sort of see what happens uh, with that. Uh, so on Amazon, uh, I thought, so I listened uh, to this call and, and built out uh, my model a little bit further. And, and I think the stock's worth about 1600 bucks, which is some good upside from here. Uh, it's about $900 at the moment. Uh, but I think AWS will actually uh, uh, outgrow uh, retail, so more Amazon will have more revenue from AWS than than the retail business uh, in in a handful like five years. So um, if that's um, surprising to you, then um, the rate of growth for for AWS is pretty strong. And if you think about what I was talking about earlier in terms of penetration, um, AWS. Um, let's take a look. AWS has revenue right now of, I don't know, 40 billion, trailing 12 months, 44 billion. And so the point here is that if you think about all technological business processes um, that can be automated with, with Amazon, you're really talking about a number that could be uh, 500 billion or, or a trillion dollars. And they're creating their own market in the sense that um, they're gonna be moving from these sort of first gen opportunities like, um, uh, storage and compute, which I use, you know, S3 and EC2. If you don't know these products, these are core AWS products. And so basically the, these are really kind of first gen. In fact, some of my, my teammates uh, at my software company say that, you know, well, we shouldn't use compute from AWS. We could do it ourselves. And even someone like Netflix is wasting time with storage uh, because, you know, they should just build their own data center. But here's the rub. I think over time, what's going to end up happening is all the AWS business will shift from storage and compute, or maybe these will even become loss leaders, or maybe they are now, and the must-have proprietary tools that they're building are, are the ones that are really going to be the sticky stuff that you just can't build on your own. You can't build machine learning on your own. You could, you, maybe you can if you're Netflix, but 95% of Amazon clients can't and, and won't build their own proprietary cool tools. I know they have a new Exabyte database tool. That's not buildable on your own. You know, there are things like that that you just simply must have. So 